Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, this will be a little bit of a different video than I usually post here. Um, it is comic book and story related, <laughs> uh, but mixing with, if you, if you guys noticed lately, I've just been talking a lot about solo role-playing games, uh, and I posted something uh, a couple days ago on Facebook, and somebody had asked me what I was talking about with the Adventure Crafter, uh, and this is actually something I came across uh, as I've been, you know, delving a little bit more into solo role-playing games. Uh, highly recommend you try doing it yourself. It's pretty cool. But um, what I wanted to do is quickly run through uh, what this tool is. Uh, and because one of the things I noticed as I've been using it for solo role playing games is I actually can't really wait to try this with a comic book. And I think you guys might be interested in it too. It's basically a bunch of prompts that are just going to allow you to um, sort of think of things within context for yourself. And as the, the, the cards show themselves and you'll start to come up with your own story that way. And, and we'll do a very quick example. I hope it'll be quick. Um, and you can use this for, I don't know, uh, like an actual, let's say an issue of a comic, maybe a whole trade paperback, maybe a story background, like a history of your character, a villain, these kinds of things. Right. Um, also I should note, uh, this adventure crafter, normally it comes like as an actual book and you're supposed to use dice because it's role-playing games, like Dungeons and Dragons, right? So you roll these dice and you go down these things. Um, I found you could buy the cards, and all these links will be in the description below for those that are interested in it. Uh, I like cards. I'm a card game kind of guy. Uh, but I just wanted to put that or bring that to you guys' attention as we go forward, because if you do like this and uh, you know, you're interested in it, you might want to just buy the book <laughs> instead of the card. So what we're going to do is uh, some of the stuff this Adventure Crafter comes with, uh, and I, I printed these out just for the ease of you guys being able to see it. Normally I just do this on the computer on a Cintiq or an iPad Pro and not have to worry about printing this out. We're going to step through this. This might look complicated. It's, hopefully it's not as we go. Uh, what you're doing here, uh, and I'll just give you a quick rundown, is you're going to pick some themes, okay, for what you want your story to be. Do you want to be action? Do you want to be mystery? Those kinds of things, right? And as we figure those out, there's a reference guide uh, that explains a little bit more of what those cards mean and then how we fill those out. And uh, the, the person that created this tool, uh, they offered a way to build this out into five. These are all like plot points and, and you can have a whole bunch of these. Okay. Sometimes just one is enough to spark an idea for all you need. But anyway, I, I don't want to talk too, too much about that. I'd rather get this going. So I'm going to crack these open. Um, and just so you guys can kind of see here. Okay. So uh, we, we start with five themes and what these are, uh, these would be the five story themes that you have, right? So action, social, mystery, tension, and personal. Sometimes what I like to do, especially with role-playing, uh, and, and I just want to put that context out there that that's where I'm coming from with this. I have yet to do this for a comic book, but this you'll see it's easily translatable uh, between the two. I normally just randomly do these. Sometimes I might want more of an action-heavy you know, kind of story, or maybe I just want to have some personal mystery, you know, like, you know, the classical tropes with role-playing games, right? Like you've lost your memory. So you got to figure out what happened, right? But there's a lot of different things that we can do with that. What I'm going to do is because I want this to be as organic as possible. We're just going to randomly shuffle these. Okay. And we'll see what we get. And what you're doing is pretty much the number from one to five. It's the story's focus. So the first thing it's going to be focusing on primarily is tension. So just let me write that in. So generally speaking, this will be tense, followed up by social, followed up by action, <laughs> mystery, and oh, what's the last one? Personal. Okay. And again, the way the cards come up, this could be different. Now, I haven't given this the context of what the hell we're doing just yet. We will do that in a second. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly run down the, the actual card itself. Hopefully this can come into focus. Uh... Sure. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of information here. All of these cards, they come like uh, two-sided, right? So the same the same information is on both, just the descriptions of them are different. So as you can tell, there is a crap load of random opportunities that happen here. And what we're going to be doing, and you'll see here, we're going to draw a few cards, and this is going to start putting in plot points, and then we start to build the world around that. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a quick shuffle. And I haven't, I'll be honest with you guys, I just wanted to make this video as quick as I could. I haven't even come up with anything. I don't even know if we have a, a hero uh, or like who it is. If we come up with somebody like, you know, one of my guys, Jessup King, you know, we could start with that. Um, or I was thinking, you know, maybe we do like Superman, you know, I don't know, Batman, like a superhero. Like I said, I know a lot of them, like my audience is pretty much comic book people. So I wanted to keep it in the vein of that. Um, 
you know what? We'll do this, okay? We're going to do Jessup King. He's a character of mine. I haven't done a story for him in a while. Uh, but anyway, so Jessup King, he is a big machine man, a 10-foot war machine who's seeking redemption. Uh, but I also had like a... At one point, it was like a bounty hunter twist to it, but he's just a, a, a nice, a good-hearted man that just tries to stop evil, right? Very classical sort of like Iron Giant Superman idea, okay? So what I'm going to do is just the context here, and, and this is where I'm just going to bring this out here. I didn't talk about this uh, in the beginning. And this gets a little complicated when you look at it, okay? On the left here, we have our plot lines, like our stories that are developing, and characters. So who's in there, right? So I'm going to fill this out because I have some information already. You might not when you start this, but again, I just want to plant the seed if this is interesting uh, so that you can uh, delve a little bit deeper in there. So the first character here I'm going to put is Jessup King. He's our main character. I think I'll also include Momo. She is like the sidekick character, but she's always involved. Uh, and I think that's it. That's all I want to know. As for like actual plot lines, nothing's happening just yet, right? So we're going to figure that out. So let's go over here, and I'm just going to put here, uh, just so you guys can see, just so what I'm checking off here. So I'm just putting, this is turning point one, just for, this is just going to be things that don't really matter to you guys just yet, a new plot point. We're probably going to try to develop or conclude plots as they go. This will make sense as it goes, trust me. So we're going to be drawing five cards, one at a time here, and you'll see what I mean here. So the first thing we do is we draw two cards. I know I just said we draw one, but hear me out. So the first card we draw has a number on it, so two. Now we go over to here, and we look at what two is. So we're starting with social, okay? And then we look on here, and these got all these little icons, and social is the T. A group is in trouble. So I'm going to write a group is in trouble. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll go through and do all of these and then read them as they go. Um, I think I'll actually do that. There's different ways you can do this sometimes. So what, and I apologize, I'm stumbling all over the place here, but a group is in trouble. That's where we go through the plot reference and it'll tell us what exactly that means in a little bit more elaborate detail. Sometimes I like to go, you know, draw these ones, figure out what it's trying to say and then figure it out or just do them all and then try to figure it out that way. I'll do them all. Hopefully it's a little quicker. So we grab the next one and it's talking or it's saying, look at number one and our number one is tension. And on our second card here, tension is, uh, here you go. So you guys can see it. It's a, like the ticking, is it a ticking bomb or is it the explosion right there? The bomb, uh, taking chances. So I'll put taking chances. Yeah, we'll keep going. Next one is two. And the second one there is social again. Uh, so it's a sold with an exclamation mark. Okay. And one of the beautiful things that I've had with this, or the success I've had with this, number one, tension, followed, is use as much as you want and throw the rest away. The idea is to just generate ideas or prompts to make your brain come up with things that come up with for all this kind of stuff. So number two on this last one, which is social, uh, a work-related gathering. Work-related gathering. All right, now let's start putting all this together and see what we can kind of come up with. The way I'm looking at this too, guys, um, you can, again, this could end up being an entire issue of a comic. This could be a part or a plot line, right? Like as we established right here, a plot line in the comic, but we'll see what this means here as we go. Okay, so the first thing we're looking at is a group is in trouble. So we're going to try that here. Uh, group is in trouble. So a group such as a community is in trouble in this plot point, which is what we're trying to figure out right now. The group or community is facing, a is facing a difficulty. For instance, maybe a village is being harassed by monsters or a corporation is facing a lawsuit. Uh, whatever the trouble is, it should be something that can be solved and will likely con uh, constitute a problem for a character. So here we go. So this introduces some questions. Honestly, like you could probably just make a story based on that, right? But uh, let's, this, this is the beauty of this whole thing right here. So we want, like, I like randomness. <laughs> I like putting this together this way. So what it's telling me is something. It could either be mon something is being harassed or something is being troubled by something. And we don't know what that is yet, right? So the community, uh, I don't know what the community is here. So I'm going to just draw two cards here. And if you look on here, we'll have descriptor. Uh, let me see if I can move this, this light a bit. There we go. Descriptor, uh, descriptor right, is sneaky. And then we'll look at the second one and the identity is a mediator. So a sneaky mediator. So what this is doing is again, it's another prompt. What could that mean for you? A sneaky mediator. And you don't want to spend too much time. It's sort of like whatever comes in your head, pops in your head. Um, a sneaky mediator. Huh? Huh? 
Okay, so off the top of my head, because like I said, Jessup King, in my initial idea, he was a bounty hunter, right? And I'm just going to jot some, down some ideas here real quick. So uh, I'm going to say it's a um, someone who works for uh, like a, a bounty hunter company, you know, like somebody that gets uh, jobs to bounty hunters. So like the mediator, the guy between the bounty and the person who's going to solve it and the person who needs that problem. Someone who works, uh, sorry, someone who works, works to get bounties to hunters. Okay. So that's the, that's the, the person in the group that he is, uh, in trouble or the, the group that that guy represent is, you know, I can come up with, we'll just say, uh, the bounty hunter guild. And this is going to get super messy. This is the way I like to work. I know some people like to be nice, tight, and clean. Uh, I'm, I'm not worrying about that. Okay. So the next thing it's saying is uh, whatever the trouble is, it should be something that can be solved and will likely constitute your problem for a character. Now the character, again, um, you might be inclined to just put who you think it is, but the organicness and randomness of the adventure crafter here, um, it's going to make your story get into twists and turns you might not have thought of. So I'm going to just grab a card. And what we're looking at is up here at the top. And I know you're bouncing around. When you get this product, if you're interested in it at all, it, it explains all of this stuff. So I know it's going to be a lot coming up. So it says character dash five. So what we do is we go and we look at that sheet that we filled out. This one. And we're looking at these numbers up here, right? So you see one to four, five to eight. Now five, we have Momo. Okay. And if you look at this card, it says five. And if there is nobody under there, under there, underneath it, it says new character. So if Momo wasn't there, we would be creating a new character. But we don't, we have one. So the character that this is impacting is Momo. So what we're going to put is character invoked. Invoked just means like who's it summoning? Who's who's uh, being introduced from just this plot point? So I'm going to put Momo. Okay, that's it. So let's move on. Let's see what's going on. So do you kind of see what's kind of happening? Something is involving a bounty hunter guild and it involves Momo. Okay, she, this, this bounty hunter's guild is a problem for her so far. So the next one is taking chances. So let's go find that. Taking chances. Okay. A character acts in a very risky way. For instance, a character may suddenly show no regard for their life as they walk out across a narrow beam above a valley to save a friend, or a villain you are fighting takes a drug that might make them go into a battle frenzy where they lose all caution. Okay, so again, this is what we're looking at. A character acts in a very risky way. What character? Okay, let's grab a card. Let's see what it says. Uh, characters, 25. So I already know. <laughs> we go here. We do not have uh, somebody for 25. Right, we'll go here, 25, there's nobody, no, nobody there. So when you look under here, then that means we need to generate a new character. Okay, let's generate a new character. So grab two cards. We're looking for the descriptor. It is an intimidating, and identity is exotic. Hmm. An intimidating exotic. Now what could that mean? Now, when I hear intimidating, right, uh, I, I'm trying to think of something lethal, something maybe, you know, like th this would be a perfect opportunity. I think actually, you know what, uh, my mind's going, I wanted to put like some massive monster, like a creature, you know, like you guys know, I like to draw muscles and stuff, right? So just like a, a vicious beast, but maybe the intimidating part is maybe it's simple. Maybe it's just related. It's a bounty hunter, right? A very, a, uh, a very well-known bounty hunter. And the exotic part I could tie it in is they don't really do normal jobs. They only do these super rare specific jobs. Okay. So I'm going to write a little note for that. Uh, I need a name. I don't have a name. Uh, I'll just come up with one on the spot here. We'll call it uh, Pathius. All right, cool. Pathius, uh, a well-known bounty hunter. only shows up for expensive rare bounties cool so uh the characters invoked this would be pathius okay? pathius and i've clearly got fantasy games on the mind if that's what i'm writing pathius doesn't that <laughs> sounds like something in a, in a fantasy game so if we go back to 25 uh pathius we're gonna put him on here pathius he is a new character 
Now, normally you put all these new characters and stuff at the end. Uh, I'm just sort of jumping the gun here. Okay, so now we go to the next one. Sold. Let's see what Pathius has to do with the guild and Momo. I love this stuff. I could do this all day, just coming up with brand new stories. Uh, LMNO, let's see. LMNO. I need to learn my alphabet, it seems here. Uh, sold. On this side? There we go. Sold. This turning point involved... Oh, sorry. Let me go back real quick here. Taking chances. Uh, a character you act suddenly regarded... Uh, or the villain you know... Okay, so taking chances. I didn't really fulfill that just yet. You know? I'm just sort of going like taking chances. Okay, so... That's a character that was introduced. A character is taking chances. What is what is it that the character is taking chances of? Hmm. Well, sometimes when you're stumped, like I am, I don't know what he would be doing. Uh, we're going to draw two more cards here. And I'm just going to... I, I like doing this because sometimes you'll get some, some interesting words. So I'm just going to look here. So strong. I draw two identities. Strong. Organizer. Hunter. A strong organizing hunter. Strong organizing hunter, that Pathius, who only shows up for rare bounties, it's a problem. Well, I'm going to try to circle back here to tension because, uh, you know, as it was drawn, I want to make sure that there's some tension in this scene. Uh, so I think... Um, maybe, okay, I got an idea here. Uh, and the, these notes, I can end up getting like all over the place here, but uh, a bounty he was on, he was on, caused him serious problems. I'm thinking, you know, like this thing, it just overpowered him, something like that. Uh, causing him to seek help. So in my mind, taking chances... You know, that kind of thing. Pathius maybe bit a little bit more than he could chew. So now he needs to seek some sort of help. Uh, in my mind, I'm already sort of connecting how this could bring in with the heroes. Why he'd be going to the bounty hunter guild and stuff like that. I can see it all sort of like coming back full circle here. But let's go to sold here. Uh, this turning point involves a sale of some kind. Maybe goods are being sold or information is bought. Whatever's happening, goods or money are... Uh, exchanging hands so sometimes right like you don't need to figure out every single thing sold is self-explanatory something is being sold we'll see as we keep going what that means uh and followed let's go to that one next <laughs> okay follow right here a character is being followed by another character go figure okay so you guys know how this goes a character is being followed by another character so we need two find a character so we go here 24 so let's go take a look i don't think we have anybody on 24 although that 25 might have been bunched up with it it is not okay so 24 if it's not there if you look down here it says choose most logical character so we pick most logical character from what we hear right now is being followed uh to me right to me the logical i always like my main character to sort of be this so i'm going to put jessup is being followed by, let's pick another character, number seven, Momo. Okay, so Jessup is being followed by Momo. Interesting. Now, again, follow doesn't always necessarily have to mean, you know, somebody is cloaked in darkness and they're in the shadows trying to find somebody else. This could mean, you know, following him reluctantly, you know, doesn't want to play along. Uh, anybody that's read Jessup King, the first issue that I had online, um, which is still available online, you guys should check that out at jessupking.com. Um, Jessup wanted to show Momo around, and she reluctantly followed in that regard, too. So I guess it sort of fits thematically. Uh, last one here uh, is a work-related gathering. Now, right off the top of my head, this feels like something to do with bounties. A work-related gathering. Hmm. Uh... Maybe I can't find here a new problem. Oh, there it is. Okay, a work-related gathering. Uh, this is a social gathering that involves professionals or workers. Okay, this is sort of right in itself. The gathering itself may or may not invoke the actual work. For instance, police officers gathering at a cop bar or a team of superheroes gathering at their headqu headquarters would both count. So, uh, to me, I mean, this sounds, again, like this would be the, uh, um, the Bounty Hunter Guild. 
I'm just going to call it the Bounty Guild, just to speed this along here. Okay, so now that I've got all that information, I'm going to take all these cards here. I'm just going to put them to the side. Now, this would, again, this would be a step one in coming up with the plot of our first story here, right? So to me, what this sounds like is a group is in trouble, right? Uh, the Bounty Hunter Guild. But it has something to do with Momo. Mo Momo is somewhere in integrated in there. Uh, taking chances, there's this legendary Bounty Hunter that... He comes, he arrives at the Bounty Hunter Guild, but he is ripped to shit. Uh, he is not in good condition. This guy is supposed to be top tier, you know, A plus tier Bounty Hunter. Uh, this guy only goes after the best and he's coming in absolutely messed up and he's looking to get help. He needs, he needs some sort of help, which puts him in a, uh, precarious position. Uh, as for something being sold, I'm not quite sure just yet. To me, maybe this has something to do with, you know what, actually, I think this might now that I'm sort of, and, and this is how the mind goes, at least it has been for me. What I think's happening, just to sum this up real quickly, is Jessup and Momo, or Momo following Jessup, we'll say Jessup just completed a bounty, he's coming back to the Bounty Hunter Guild to cash in that bounty, when Momo's following him, she doesn't like being here, she'd rather go do shopping or whatever else Momo likes to do, but she reluctantly tags along. When they get there, they notice that there's a commotion at the Bounty Hunters Guild, and that's where they see Pathias, and that would be the start of this sort of story here. So, um, I can't really write it in notes. <laughs> As you can see, I fill this up. I do this digitally, because I like to scribble everywhere. Uh, most of my artist friends, you guys write similar to like I do, you just vomit all over the page. So this is a little bit constricted. So I'm just going to put right here for the plot line, right? So, um, Jessup and Momo... Go to, I'm just going to put cash in instead of writing anything extra specific. Cash in bounty at guild. Notice a gathering there with a heavily damaged Pathias who seeks help. Okay. Now for some of you, that might be enough to go perfect. I know my entire story from that, <laughs> right? You guys just might go, that's it. We're done. What I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you is, okay, that's cool. Let's keep going. Maybe we'll go one more time here. This video is looking like it's about 20 minutes. You know, I really don't like these long ass videos, but sometimes, you know, they, they work a little bit better this way. So what I'm going to do is the last thing you're supposed to do <laughs> at the end of this, as I kind of jumped the gun, is now that we have all this information, we go through here, we start filling out things. So who else was invoked uh, in this? So Momo was invoked, Pathias was invoked, Jessup and Momo, and the Bounty Hunter Guild. Okay, those are characters. Now, I already have their names here. So what we do, and this is the actual beautiful part about that I love about the Adventure Crafter here, is so Momo's name here, you only do this once. So even though it's her name's here and her name's here, you're only tracking it once. So Momo goes in the next spot. Okay. Then we go down here. Who's next? Pathias. I already wrote him down here because he was character 25. Uh, Jessup comes up again. So I'm going to put Jessup King here. The next character is Bounty Guild. Now, Bounty Guild isn't necessarily, you know, a singular character. Uh, but it's an organization, but it can always be brought up in some way in the story. Now, why this is awesome, okay? Because in storytelling, what you're going to do is, as you could tell, Jessup and Momo are on there twice, which means the f story is going to start falling on them more. It's just start picking, because now they have more random op or opportunities to show up. And hopefully we'll see that in the next one. But that's, that's how that's going. The next, so we would jump into the next one, right? So now we're into turning point two. Now, what you might get, and I'll show you, we'll see if it happens here. Um... Oh, sorry. Uh, you would do the same for the plot line list here, right? So that Jessup and Momo go to cash in. I'm just going to put in, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a cleaner name than everything I wrote there. So I'll just say Pathias Help. Okay. Um, that's the only thing that was brought up here. There was no other real plot point uh, that came up during our uh, way of bringing this up. So if you look here, the very first thing we draw for this next one, right, this turning point two that we're starting on, is you look here. Over there we were looking for characters, but now we're looking at plot points. So you see we do the same thing. Same thing. It says plot, plot lines 21. We go over here, we don't have anything for 21. So the next thing it says is choose most logical plot line. What might happen here is it might say something like, uh, let me see if I can find another one. These all say the same thing. 
Now, they all say choose most logical uh, plot line that I'm finding because it wants to steer the story in that way. Uh, here you go. Okay, so like here it would say new plot line. So something unrelated that could affect this and, and yada, 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 that kind of thing, okay? So this is one we got. So it's choose most logical plot line. So we're going with Pathius help, okay? So uh, on here, on our paper, right, we just go development. It's not a new plot line. It's the development from the previous one, and it's not a conclusion yet. Conclusion just means somehow that plot point wraps up. Okay, so let's hurry this up. We'll do the next one here. Let's see if we can go a little bit quicker here. So this one is, we do the same thing. So we're looking at number one, and number one on here is tension again. And on the second card, it says none. Okay, so for none, we just go put a line. And what this does is that way it makes it so that there's not always five things every single time. Two, uh, social, and outcast. So on there. Next one is one, which is tension, uh, a need to hide. Interesting. A need to hide. An outcast so far that needs to hide. All right, all right. Number three, action. Here we go. And the action here is an explosion. Oh, that sucks. It says none. <laughs> I'm an action guy. What can I say? I like big fights. Number three, action. Do we get lucky on this one? Uh, ooh, okay. So this one says uh, double down. That sounds good. Double down. Okay. Double down. Okay. Let's do it. Outcast is the first thing we do. So we're going to go look at Outcast. KLMNO. There we go. Uh, outcast. Okay, so a character is considered an outcast by other characters for some reason. Maybe the character is part of an ethnic group that is disliked in the area, or perhaps the character is popularly believed to be the perpetrator of a heinous crime. Okay, um, I'm going to draw cards here, but in my mind, again, uh, interestingly enough, Jessup King is a war machine, which all war machines were supposed to be destroyed, and most people don't know. It's sort of a secret. So to me, that fits that role, like he is the outcast. But we got to let the cards decide because that's where the randomness comes in. So, uh, outcast. A character is considered. We need a character. Who do we got? Number five is the first one we look at. Here, let me get rid of this because we're not going to need that paper. Bring this one out. Number five is Momo, interestingly enough. So, she apparently is really driving this story. So, characters invoked, right? We put Momo. Uh, a character is considered an outcast by other characters for some reason. Uh, now, this one, again, I'm just going to grab this, see what we get. Uh, number 20, whoops, number 22. I don't know if we have anything there yet. 22, we do not. Uh, so it says, choose most logical character. So who would she be an outcast from? Well, to me, like I said before, uh, Jessup King is the bounty hunter. She's sort of like, you know, she tags along and stuff. So Momo is an outcast of the bounty hunter guild. Hunter guild. Cool. And a need to hide. To me, I'm already like in my mind, right? I'm thinking like Jessup King's the outcast because he's a war machine. Somebody finds that out. Now they need to hide because that secret's getting out. But yeah, I mean, you could totally roll with that stuff too. I like just letting the cards decide. It's just a little bit more fun. Uh, what is it? A need to hide. There we go. Okay. A need to hide. A character must hide from something or someone in this turning point. For instance, a character, uh, the character may have escaped from a bounty hunter, interestingly enough, uh, but must hide along, must hide long enough to recover their wounds or a terrible storm has struck and the character must take shelter hiding from a storm. Cool. So a character uh, is hiding from something or someone. So let's find the character. Number three. I'm pretty sure it's Jessup King. Yep. Perfect. So Jessup is hiding from something or someone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the special trait. We haven't looked at that just yet, okay? Right here. So special trait. What this does is this one says a char the character is an object, right? So this makes it so it's not always just characters. Uh, the character is an individual, that kind of thing. So the character is an object. So Jessup King is hiding from an object. I'm going to grab two cards here, right? We're going to look at a descriptor. So the object is an arrogant, draw two identities, <laughs> two identities oh my goodness look at all the identities okay there we got exotic again so it's an arrogant exotic law enforcement oh okay <sighs> it's an object got it okay so the first thing that pops in my head going along with this uh thing is maybe there is a um a task force 
that is their job is to find any maybe okay back in the purge of the great war machines right we'll go back a little history lesson so the times of the great uh, purge of the war machines uh the galactic federation got together and they said we have to make sure these weapons of mass destruction are destroyed they'll never come back we do not want to repeat we don't want history to repeat themselves even though they thought that they destroyed all the war machines they created these drones and they sent them all over space, kind of like uh, Star Wars, you know, and they're trying to check out uh, all the different planets to see where the rebels are hiding, something like that. And one of them obviously has stumbled here and Jessup needs to hide from that. So, uh, and the exotic part to me, did you see sort of like how you're pulling in the words and whatever creative pr prompt that pops in your head, put it down. Don't, don't worry about trying to fit a square into a circle here. You're just trying to get it out of your head. So I'm going to put a, uh, um, how would I word that? A... War machine finding. <laughs> I'm sure there's a drone. I'm sure there's a, a more classy way to describe that. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, we got nothing. The next one, then double down. Let's see what we got over here. So double down. Double down, double down. Uh, double down. Whatever is happening in this turning point, those events will intensify. For instance, if a ship is leaking on the high seas during a storm, maybe torrential winds tear down the sails. Okay, so again, uh, that's not invoking anything. It's just making me uh, try to think of how this sort of uh, comes together. So now that that one's done, again, we do the same thing. So we look over here, and we go to the characters list. Who is invoked? Momo, again. So she's going here. And you can only have three names of a single identity here so no matter how many more times momo comes up as long as there's three here we can't bring it up anymore and jessup is brought up again so both of the our main characters are filled up which is great okay all right so we've got that going so like how am i going to tie this in okay so an outcast so momo is an outcast she's not a, a, a bounty she's not part of the bounty hunters guild so that's it's not necessarily a problem uh, it's just in this, in this plot, in the development of the plot line, something is happening that, uh, you know, there is a conflict there and then something's going to happen where the war machine drone <laughs> finds, or at least is uh, coming towards Jessup in some way. Uh, perhaps he's got scanners built in to detect when certain things enter atmosphere or around him in certain ways. Okay. That's at least what I like. The double down part means to me, they have to really figure out a way to just not be found. I think that's, uh, the major point in this one. So how we bring this together here. Uh, so Jessup and Momo go to cash in a bounty at the guild and gather, uh, and there they find a, a heavily damaged Pathius who needs help. We still don't know what he needs help of, help for. Uh, perhaps Momo can actually find out what the specifics of that help need to be. So I'm just going to just go in with this. So, um, Jessup talks to the guild, talks to guild because he's part of the guild. He wants to know what's happening. What, what did Pathius say? What's going on with blah, blah, blah. There's like, I don't want to say politics, but there's some bits and pieces going around here. Uh, and I think Momo will be the one to talk to uh, Pathius, talk to Pathius, because he's not exactly a member, or he is a member of the guild, but he is not the guild. Uh, Pathius, uh, Jessup's sensors go off. Actually, you know what? I think what it might even be better. I just think this drone opens attack. Opens attack. So in my mind, this is uh, where, where we're kind of going. So the story would open up with, like I say, Jessup and Momo arriving to wherever they are. We still haven't determined that. That's, you know, we can figure that out. That's not a big deal. They arrive there. Uh, Jessup goes in to cash in the bounty. There's chaos going around. Pathius, the legendary bounty hunter, just showed up. And he is bleeding from all, friggin' all over himself. Gashes in his gut. All kinds of horrible things. Seeking help. Panicked. Absolutely just destroyed. And... Jessup goes over like, what the hell's going on? What's going on? And there's just chaos and he's trying to figure out what's going on. He knows who Pathius is, right? Everybody's heard of the legendary Pathius, but whatever. Momo doesn't care. If you guys remember the first issue, like, she, you know, she's, she's oblivious to some things. She's very uh, about herself. So Momo goes over to him and he's like, you know, you look pretty messed up. What's going on? And I think this is in my mind where in the story, we would cut away from all of a sudden bounty uh, bounty guild members are just getting shot. D -d 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 -d, you know, like lasers are coming in. And Jessup and Momo turn around and they see it's this drone has shown up and it just, their program is to destroy war machines and it found one. But I mean, 
war machines are so deadly, these things just eradicate things in the entire area. So sadly, there's a lot of death here because Jessup's there. <laughs> He's put them all at risk. But this causes, and that's where I'm trying to pull in this double down. I think this uh, drone, like I just said, just wants to annihilate everything. Just destroy, destroy, destroy. So it's doubling down on just absolute destruction throughout the thing. What I like about that is we don't find out what the, um, what, uh, what's his name again? Pathius? We don't know what Pathius told Momo, but obviously it has something to do with the plot. And I'm sort of leaving that open because in the next point we could find out what that is. So, um, I'm going to do this one more time because I'm actually curious just to see how this goes. Uh, but you could end it here, guys. And I hope this has shown you a little bit uh, of something like this is, again, I'm just using this tool to describe a situation right? If, or, or an issue for a comic, or like I said, I use this for solo RPG. This is more than enough to get me going to like enjoy a night of uh, Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, right? Uh, you could use the exact same tool to sort of go, um, what's the background of Pathius, right? We, we could have just used all of that. Pathius is an outcast who needs to hide from something. We could figure all that out. And he doubles down by going, you know what I mean? Like you could figure out bits and pieces, how you draw the cards. Um, excuse me, how your themes line up, like where your story is headed. If you want to just pure action and mystery, you just put those at the top kind of thing, right? So anyway, I hope this uh, shared you guys. If you guys are interested, uh, I could do more of these. Just let me know in the comments below. I'd, I'd totally love to do more if you guys are interested in them, okay? But thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to continue with one more, but again, uh, you can take off if uh, this is done enough here, okay? So we're going to go here. Uh, I'm going to grab that paper that I threw away because I didn't think I would do three plot points. Uh, also, another thing uh, I should note too, like if you wanted to do a graphic novel, right, you just consider you do six of these, which would be six issues or five issues, and each one of these just make it the entire issue. Maybe throw in a little extra spice because I think, you know, that might be a little boring, just them walking around, but you could fill it out, right? Like Jessup and Momo arriving to the planet and then walking through there, and maybe you get to see a little bit of the village that they're at or see the society that they live in, story stuff, right? That's all. You could fill it in with, you could stretch these things out no matter what there. Okay, so the turning point three, let's keep it going. So we draw it up here. What are we looking at? Plot line number three. We go over here. It's still Pathia's help. Okay, so. Um, actually, I think what I'm supposed to do here, and I could have been wrong. Uh, I think I'm supposed to write this again a second time. Because it was being evoked because it's the same plot line being developed i could be wrong on this um i normally don't really delve too deep with the adventure crafter on plot lines but what the hell we'll just see how it goes uh so it's development because it's still on the same thing okay so let me just put this over here we're going to draw the five cards again so we get here so three so we're now we're getting into some action thank god escape all right this is starting to just write itself again yeah escape right we were just under a giant attack a lot of death Number two, two is social, and this one says conclusion. Interesting. So conclusion generally means, eh, maybe this wraps this up. We'll go through. But conclusion generally, generally means that at the end of this turning point, this uh, Pathius help has to be resolved. Actually, kind of makes sense here. Like, in my mind, I'm trying to think, right? Like, this is what we where we would figure out what Pathius told um, Momo. He's probably going to a die in this attack right? So we're not helping him anymore because he's going to die. <laughs> but then that pushes the story on to like, so now Jessup and Momo might have to deal with whatever it was that Pathius was trying to tell them. Uh, meta. Now I forgot what meta is. I'd have to double check. Oh no, sorry. It's like this whole other thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So meta is this thing where it's like outside of the story that could affect multiple things. So character downgrade. Somebody's getting hurt. Character downgrade. Uh, usually, I mean, this is actually freaking hilarious. To me, that's going to literally mean that uh, Pathius is going to die. Number two is social. A common social gathering. All right. <clears throat> and the last one, number one, back to tension, uh, taking chances. All right, honestly, guys, like, I, to me, uh, and this is actually, okay, this might actually be a good uh, example here. So to me, this literally plays itself out here. So in my mind, and I have to presume here that I'm also the reader, right? Because that's where you know, your mind goes is the characters, they, you know, from that last attack from the drone, they escape. They figure some way to Jesus, like, let's get out of here. Um, character downgrade, 
to me, again, Pathius dies in that odd slot from the drone. Um, the uh, a common social gathering, again, could just be the um, the bounty guild, or it could be the village that they're in, or the city, wherever this is. And taking chances is, are they going to take the chance to go find and fulfill what Pathius asked or told Momo that she needed to do? And you go. Now, why I wanted to say that is. If I was a reader, this might make this is natural because it's the first thing that pops in my head. The beautiful part is when you start adding randomness <laughs> from this, it adds, I'm hoping anyway, is it's going to add a little pinch to what we were just talking about. And that little pinch makes us go, oh, gee, that's like that curveball that happens in a story or a plot twist, right? Like, oh, didn't see it like that, right? So let's see what goes. Maybe Pathias doesn't die, right? Maybe the guy's just too sick. And too sick, I mean, like, he's just badass. Okay, so let's check this out real quick, and we can wrap this up. Escape. This turning point involves an escape of some sort. For instance, a character who was captured by brigands in an earlier turning point manages to slip away from his captors and the escape into the forest. Okay, so let's check it out. What character? Uh, okay, uh, character. Eleven. Eleven is Momo. See? So we're already getting there. So, Momo... Uh, what was the character? Whatever activity is going on. Um, okay, keep it going, see what goes. So, conclusion. Conclusion. In, uh, in this turning point, a current, uh, sorry. If, if this turning point is currently a plot line development, which it is, then it becomes a plot line, plot line conclusion. Incorporate anything necessary into this turning point to end this plot line and remove it from the plot lines list. If this turning point is a new plot line or already a conclusion that consider this plot point, none. Okay. So conclusion, this has to go away. Okay. So then the next one is character downgrade. Uh, let's see what we got here. Character downgrade right up here. Um, a character becomes less important. Remove them from two slots on the character list, even if it removes them completely from the list. Interesting. If this would remove a player character completely from the list, or when rolling for the character, you get result as a new character, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's asking a bunch of stuff. So let's see what the character is that it's talking about first before we do any more. Uh, so 24. I don't know. If, let's see what we got. 24 is Momo. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so Momo gets uh, removed from... Okay, uh, so let's see what it says one more time there. Uh, a character becomes less important, so remove two of them from the list. You got it. So I believe we start from the bottom. So we're going to scratch Momo out and Momo. What I, what I find interesting about this, right, is this starts shifting the focus away from her. Uh, and I'm assuming it brings it back to uh, Jessup, which is, you know, it might be something we want to do. A, a common social gathering. Let's check that out. There we go, right here. Uh, this turning point involves a social gathering. This can be any gathering of people, generally a common for a common purpose, such as gathering for dinner at a home or restaurant, or afternoon at the mall. The social gathering itself can be considered a mundane nature, although what else transpires at the gathering doesn't necessarily have to be. So a common social gathering. This turning point involves a social gathering. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that alone, and we'll see in my mind, again, how this is sort of playing out. Uh, and taking chances, let's see if that sparks anything else. Uh, right here. Here we go. Taking chances. A character acts in a very risky way. For instance, a character may suddenly show no regard for their life. Uh, as they walk. Okay, so we already did that one, eh? We did that one earlier. Taking chances. Uh, that was Pathias. That came out and showed himself. Okay, so let's see what character is taking chances. Is it Pathias again? <laughs> Alright, so number nine. Actually, it was Momo, but it's crossed off. So we look here, and it's a new character. Alright, new character it is. Let's see what we get. So this character, I'm going to go here this time, is an individual. Perfect. And they are a cautious socialite. A cautious socialite. Hmm. A cautious socialite. That acts in a very risky way. Well, socialite is somebody that, you know, they need to talk. They need to be around people. A cautious It's very interesting. Some of you might already be getting ideas of exactly what this kind of character might be. I'm drawing a little bit of a blank here. 
socialite, socialite. Somebody that's always around, but they're cautious. I'm going to, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know what? I want to keep this still guild related. I don't want to go too, too crazy off here. So I'm going to say there's a bounty hunter that's there. Maybe a new, uh, a new recruit. Somebody that's br not, not brand new, but maybe they've only cashed in one, maybe two bounties of low things. They haven't gone out and slain like monsters or, or taken out giant criminals and super bosses or anything like that. So the cautious part to me, the socialite is them trying to, you know, they want to stay engaged. They want to get the information they can from their fellow bounty hunters and just, they want to grow and learn. They're very eager to learn. Uh, the, the cautious part to me is like, they, they're very aware that they're still, you know, they have green thumbs They're they're very, they haven't done this enough to put them in any kind of pedigree to be surrounded by the kinds of people or the situation that's taking place here. Uh, and the taking chances part is, I think this is the moment that character goes and does something related to whatever's happening in this thing. So let's give this a character a name. Um, I don't know <laughs> uh, if it's a boy or a man or a woman. So I'm going to say if it's a, uh, a one to three at the top, it's a woman. If it's any, any other number, it's a man. Shuffle. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So it's a woman. Uh, we'll come up with the name. Uh, we'll call her... <laughs> Here we go. Karen. <laughs> so Karen uh, some does something here. So reading this through here and knowing what happened in the previous thing. So the last thing we left off with was Momo knows something about Pathius. Pathius did something. And uh, so they start escaping. I think what happens is... Um, escape momo is the focus of this escape here uh she is a magician she is a wizard i think what might happen here is as people start getting shot you know just getting laser just getting annihilated by this drone she does some sort of teleport spell boom gets her and jessup out but what might happen here is i think maybe uh karen at that moment grabbed onto jessup you know scared like jesus what the f right just look at the biggest tank you can see you just happens to be next to her which is jessup and Boom, they get teleported out, and she's now with them. And from there, it concludes the uh, the character downgrade, which was Momo, we didn't do that, a common social gathering. I think she teleports them, and this brings them, this is sort of tying into what I had already come up with, uh, brings them back to, like, the, the town square, the town village or whatever. And um, the conclusion is, I also think, I know they didn't come up here, but my mind already went there, so I think I would figure out what was it that, um, what's his name? Uh, Pathias told Momo what was it that he told her that they need to do and not only now do Jessup I don't think J Jessup and Momo necessarily need to get a, or like destroy the drone drone they could they definitely could but uh in my mind Jessup is passive and he only does what he absolutely has to even though this thing caused that kind of death I think it would be in his best interest to just they need to get out of there fast they don't he doesn't want to stay there to let this thing just rain destruction everywhere he also doesn't want to let everybody know that he's a war machine and he's actually capable of destroying these kinds of drones average people aren't so for him to do so it would reveal who he is so they would immediately need to teleport off uh, out of the ship and, and go maybe their ship is in the town square or maybe this is all at the docks or the docks like somewhere where these spaceships dock you know and that's where momo teleported them so they could run out of the ship i think i like that a little bit better it flows a little bit also, this gives them the drive. What are we doing now? Get away from the drone, but it also establishes that little thing where that drone is something that could cause some serious destruction to them in the in the future, right? Like it's a it's a um, oh, what is that called? It's not it's not a plot point, but it's like a you guys will be able to fill me in because I'm drawing a blank here. But a a little plot device, right? That's going to come up possibly later, uh, and that, that I think that would be more than enough from what we need. Uh, and then the characters could go on their little adventure here. So I'm going to just show you guys one last thing and then we'll wrap it up because I'm curious. I want to see where my brain takes me here. There's another deck here called the Mythic Game Emulator uh, deck. Again, you could get this as a book with dice. If you want to play Dungeons and Dragons or anything solo, really, this is what you need. And then you are good to go. It's very similar. Similar. It's made by the same person. I'm just going to grab a, a bunch of cards here. Uh, and as you can see, this, I'm not going to go over. There's a reason why I'm bringing this up here. Uh, but this is called an Oracle. This would be like your Dungeon Master. Is there a monster behind the door yeah there's a big monster behind the door right is the door trapped no those kinds of things okay but they also have uh these things right here descriptions action subject right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you here we're going to come up we're going to let our brain meet uh figure this out here quick shuffle so this and this is why i would want to know for writing my story right like this is that thing what is it that pathy has told momo 
Maybe this is the time to reveal it. Maybe it's a little bit later. It doesn't have to be anything like earth shattering, right? It could be, you know, there's a giant hummus monster that took me out. You know, it could be fun. It could be whatever. All right, so that's enough shuffling. So I'm going to draw a couple cards here. You'll see how this goes. So what Pathias told Momo was malice. And right here, a malice rumor. Ooh. All right. Hmm, my mind's kind of racing there. And then the next thing we do is get a little bit more um, description here. So cheerfully lacking, cheerfully lacking malice rumor. All right, so what this tells me, at least at the top of my head, is there was a rumor that Pathias heard um, through the Bounty Guild of some exotic creature right? Malice, I just, it's just full of hate. There's this monster that's just full of hate. And what it does is maybe we can just go absolutely crazy. Let's also ask this Oracle, does this thing consume worlds? <laughs> I want to go epic with this. Does this thing consume worlds? No. Okay. That sucks. Okay. So it's not Galactus, right? Uh, what else could this thing do? That's just full, filled with hate. Um, is this, Oh, maybe this might be cool. Maybe it's like some sort of parasite kind of thing that, you know, like, invades people and turns them into husks that go and just it just multiplies over and over again like a like a virus that just kills 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 is, is that it yeah okay there we go okay cool so mal or uh, malice uh Pathias tells momo of this thing he heard from a rumor he doesn't know who he heard he just heard of it from somewhere else of this creature that could do these kinds of things and the cheerfully helpless he feels absolutely helpless and he's happy that perhaps Momo can help them. I don't know. We'll wrap it up with that. But anyway, I hope this showed you guys enough of what this could be and what it could do for you. I hope you guys check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video anyway. Let me know if you guys want me to make more. Because uh, I have a blast doing this stuff. But anyway, keep reading comics. Keep making comics. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.